So I'm Jonas Kesenimi from the University of Helsinki Library and I'm here to talk about a little bit about the uh, results of our project called ATTX and especially about the, this one aspect or one main feature of that uh, platform, the provenance service. And uh, first a little bit about the project. So it started roughly a year ago, a bit more. Uh, and the main idea has been to develop uh, software components for building semantic data brokers. So we're not building a service or we're not, we're not transforming any data, but we are building the, uh, the building blocks for creating, for creating those services and, making, and, and performing those tasks. And the main features of the platform has been, or the idea has been that you have an easy, it used to be without the, the quotation marks, but since we have been working on it, I put the quotation marks there. So relatively easy and scalable deployment, meaning that you can um, uh, lower the threshold for data experimentation so that you, instead of setting up servers or, or getting resource, resources from the IT department, you could spin up some uh, uh, cloud resources and just push it there. Uh, and then it should be flexible and it should use linked data. So the idea is to have the, this kind of bring your own data model approach, approach. So it doesn't, you don't have to use any data model, but you have to come up with something on your own or you reuse something existing. And then the third one is the, is the, the fact that because you are building data brokers, you are basically taking someone else's data, doing something with it and redistributing it. Uh, having a full and uh, usable provenance is, is a key uh, element. And uh, the project was funded by the Ministry of Education and Culture and executed by the Helsinki University Library and us three guys, so myself, uh, Joao da Silva and Stefan Negro. And there are a couple of links. The first one is the, prop, the better link. It takes you to the, to the more technical documentation and the other one is the not so often updated official website. And uh, actually this, the, our goal has been to um, uh, uh, actually, uh, yesterday's keynote, George Holt mentioned these this two things, uh, the making data available and actively connecting or act actively linking data sets. And this tool or this, uh, these components has been developed for, in, for the second purpose. So the idea is that the data is already there. You know where the data is. You have an idea that, okay, by making this kind of processing, connect, using these identifiers to connect, connect, connect the things, I have some added value and I can use it, I can, I can use it for example in a third system. So that's the, that's the guiding principle. And when I, and the data brokering uh, is what I th think about it, something like this in the, in the context of ADTX. So you have the data sources and then you, we create an internal uh, data with, the, with your own model from that it can be based on some existing uh, uh, vocabulary or uh, ontologies, for example, and then from that internal data, you can create multiple different kinds of uh, views, and it could be just that it's different format, like the, the 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 first one, or it can be a subset of the internal model. If you can, for example, for certain purposes, you can you can use certain data to connect the data sets, but you can't redistribute it for some reason. Um, and uh, here's an overview of the, the de deliverables of, uh, of the project. So we have different kinds of components, as I mentioned, for workflow, for graph ma managing the, the internal state, the graph manager for provenance, for, for processing, for distribution, and this, these, all these components are tied together through a message broker. So uh, in, a, in contrast to the, to the previous presentation where you, have, you need to have your, when you have created your data set, you need to have your server somewhere where, where you can push it here we have the idea that the server is there already and you can, you can or it's part of the platform or part, one of the components. And uh, we, we, we have created three deployment uh, environments. So you can, on a single host, you can set it up for de uh, deployment or for testing on your own computer. Uh, or you can use uh, uh, Swarm, Docker Swarm in, in OpenStack Cloud. And then we have, we have been using this uh, uh, open source product called Contena which is a really nice and developer-friendly container and microservice platform uh, that has features like the vault where you can, you can set your credentials and it has 
image registries, image registries, registries, and things like that. Because the components here, they are all Docker images, basically. And when you run them, you run them as a container. And if you want to know about, if you want to know more about these deployment environments, I urge you to talk to Chuao right there. So, and this is a laundry list of the, compo the core components. So the workflow man for workflow management, we're using unified views, uh, which is uh, 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 the result of some EU project a couple of years ago. Uh, we have Graph Manager that manages the internal state. We have Messaging Broker, and for that we use the, the RapidMQ. We have indexing service, and then we have separate distribution services, and those are uh, basically for uh, distributing the JSON documents, and we're using Elasticsearch. We're using the RML for transforming from different formats to, to the internal RDF format. And from the RDF format to JSON, we use the JSON-LD framing. And then we have the provenance. Uh, so actually, as you can see, the RDF format, uh, the, or the distribution of RDF has, is, has been a secondary goal. Our goal is to distribute something that in basically all web developers can use. So just to recap a, a little bit about provenance. So the idea is that you can, you can have a information about the people, institutes, entities that deal or somehow work with a piece of data or a thing. And uh, so that you have, you can go back to the processing and see that uh, uh, who did something and who did what and when. And uh, here, this is a quote from the W3C page where they think, uh, well, they talk about giving credit, but in our case, it's basically just who to blame when there is, a, there is some kind of error in the data. So you can go back and, and uh, check that. And in order to present or to represent the, the provenance, you have a Provo uh, ontology, which has these three or four main classes. Uh, the, the agent is the one who's doing something. It can, can be a human or it can be software. Uh, and there's, it, uh, there's an activity, which is the, the process that, that the agent is doing and is associated with it. Uh, and that activity uses some kind of entities as an input and then generates something as an output. And those entities can be attributed to the agent who was running the activity. And the activity can have a plan. So for example, the steps that were, were uh, executed. And uh, our model just basically uh, subclasses uh, those basic, basic uh, things. So for uh, the plans, our plan is the workflow. And, and we have also subclassed that into different kinds of workflows. And I will get, that, get to that. Uh, in the next slide, uh, a bit more closely. Uh, in activities, we are we di differentiate between different levels, three different le levels of activity. So you have the workflow execution, the highest level. Then you have the step executions. Steps makes out make out of the, the uh, workflow is consists of steps, and then every step can have one or more or zero or more uh, service executions so associated to, associated to it, and service executions can link to one another, of course. Uh, and then the entities, basically the high level provenance, the workflows, they deal with data sets in our lingo. So there's one, one data set coming in and it produces another data set. Basically uh, on the tech, more technical level where the steps and, and services are, are working, you are dealing with files or graphs. Or, and the graph means that it's the content of the, of the graph that the, that the activity is dealing with. So before going to the example case, I will give a small like uh, information about how we we look at the pipelines. So in an ETL, you have this extract, transfer, and load, and the pipeline usually uh, executes all of those. But in addition to that, because we have the internal graph store, which is the internal stage, we also like divide the like to divide the, the workflows into uh, extract or ingest, transform or process, and load or publish type of workflows. And the differences that or the differences are that the extract or the ingest ingestion workflows, they are the only ones taking data in from the outside world and basically creating new RDF data sets in the internal uh, store. And the process is basically taking data from inside the system and adding a new data set inside the system. And then you have the publish pipelines, uh, which take again data from the inside, from the in, inside the system and they publish it to the data APIs. 
So these would, would be the, the uh, distribution components. Uh, and the reason for this is that we want to keep the, the different as aspects separate so that the pipelines become really, can become really uh, simple. And also different data sets, different external data set, they might have different uh, uh, update schedules, for example. So you don't have to always get all the data in and do some complicated processing, but you can reuse the data that's already within the system. And the example case is simple, connecting publications to files. We have two data sources. We have the, the Chris, where we get publication data. So ID, uh, external ID and title. And digital repository, where, where we get the files. We get, again, ID for the file, uh, DOI for the, the external publication. So this is the other record in the, in the digital repository. We have the download link and the file type, which is something that we want to associate with the, with the uh, publications. So, we get the has external ID or the publication resource and the external uh, resource, and we get the has external ID and the has file and the file resource from the, re from the original data. What we don't have is the has file connection, and that's something we need to generate. And from unified views, we, have, we can have something like this. So the first two are the ingestion pipelines. They basically harvest the original data and turn it into RDF. And then we have the infer uh, processing pipeline, with, with, which basically adds that, that, uh, those links between the publication and the file. And then we have the pub publish pipeline. And I'm going to show you like, quickly the, how they look in the unified views. So you, have, uh, you, you can see that you have an RML service where you transform that JSON to RDFS. You basically, what you, right now, you put in the configuration that, that you, you see in the previous uh, uh, presentation, and it would be so nice to have some kind of integration with the editor. So you, or you could first create the mappings, and then you would put it in here. And then you have the replace data set, which works with the graph. So this is the ingestion pipeline. And then you have the processing pipeline, where you first select the data set. So here you can see a small snippet of the, of the UI. So you have these two RDF data sets, the publications and the files. And you se select those as an input. And then you do in this case, it's just a construct uh, query, and you create those missing links. And again, you replace a data set. But this is a different data set, because in the publishing pipeline, you now have three data sets to choose from. And you take all of those, because when you're now framing the data, so uh, by selecting those three graphs, you create one graph, and you can frame that into JSON file. And you put publish that to the indexing service. Uh, and uh, the way we collect the provenance data about all the things that are going on in this pipeline is basically through explicit messages saying that I did this. That's the, that, that is the simplest way to, to do it. But the nice thing about that is that we, have, we can use this fire and forget kind of operation because we have the message broker. The service can just send the message, and when, it, when the broker has received it, there is a persistency for those messages and automatic retries, so the service doesn't have to worry about it anymore. And then the activities are connected through the inputs and outputs. And, uh, and this provenance is generated from, diff from small pieces coming from different containers from different nodes. And it looks something like this that you have, for example, the workflow manager said that, says that I have ex executed a step, executed a workflow, and the craft manager is re replacing things and retrieving things. Framing is generating JSON and indexing and, and RML and so on. So these are the bits and pieces that are, are stitched together by the provenance service and then published automatically. So the provenance service publishes this data uh, to the Elasticsearch index uh, and frames it using the same framing service as the, as the uh, uh, other pipelines. And then it collects all the provenance uh, data related to, to one workflow execution into one uh, document type. So you can easily query uh, the, bit, the different bits and pieces related to certain uh, workflow execution using something like, like the get request like the, in there. And then uh, for using that provenance, we basically are trying to figure out two different questions. So how are the inputs and outputs of the pipelines connected to each other? Because when we have these different kinds of small pipelines that are doing ingestion, processing, and 
publishing they are related to each other, which might not be the case in, the, in a more traditional ETL settings. And then if a user is, uh, someone is getting documents from the data API and then starts to wonder, there's this error, what data sets were used to create this document? So he or she could go to the provenance and check where it has come from. And I have made a very crude provenance browser that uh, uh, exposes this information. I will show some screenshots of that. Uh, uh, so uh, we're using a ProbVis for visualizing the, the graph, and it's a bit messy. But here you can see that, that, for example, the first failed run, or there's a plan, you select something, you frame, and you publish. And you can, you can see, or you might not see, that in the first one, it step, uh, stops with the framing service, and then it creates something, but there's nothing else there. So the plan was not executed successfully. Whereas in the other one, you have the framing, it creates something, and then there is a service and a step that uses the same thing, entity as an input, and it generates an, out, generates an output, which is the published data set. And the connected data sets can be seen here. So you have uh, basically, oh, I can't show it here. You can see the whole uh, pipeline in the example, or the different pipelines in the example connected to each other. You can look it up later. <laughs> but you can see that one first becomes those uh, original data sets. They first become RDF data sets. Then the infer data set is uh, made using those original RDF data sets. And then the public data sets uses one, two, and three. And create, creates a fourth one. Oh, that was fast. So to do, do uh, we don't yet have provenance for increment, incrementally harvested data sets. So data sets that basically could have subsets. Sub uh, because it would be nice to be able to see which part of the data set was, was uh, uh, harvested and when, for example. And then we have played around with service registry component. And we would like to have that, or we need that. And, uh, and then that would allow us to get more uh, information of maybe just the same information, uh, information about the different components in, uh, in a common manner. So you, you would have some kind of registration to the, to the regi registry. And you can use that to describe the component that actually did the, the, the component or the agent that did the activity. And then the one interesting thing would be to have implicit provenance. So this, this kind of, I did this provenance collection is really simple. But it would be nice to, because we, are, have, we have the message broker through which all the communication goes through. Uh, we could intercept all of those messages and send them to the message broker. And the message broker can then, or not, to the provenance service. And the pro provenance service could then uh, reconstruct this request and response patterns there, and then even if the services are not saying anything about what they're doing, you could still have some kind of uh, provenance that has been extracted from the, from the communication between the different components. And as Osma said, this is <laughs> no fireworks, but just a little, another reminder that it's <laughs> Finland. And this is our whooper swan, so that's the national bird of Finland. Thank you.